Hi guys, this is Dave Strong from the Schmidt Music Saxophone Shop, and today we're going to talk a little bit about what a baffle is. For those of you who've looked into mouthpieces before, you might have heard the term rollover baffle, or step baffle, or wedge baffle, or bullet baffle. Um, but, uh, you know, for a long time I didn't know what that was or what it did, and turns out it can have a really big effect on a sound, and uh, what kind of brightness, darkness, how much volume you get out on a mouthpiece, it can affect a lot of different factors. Um, but for, like I was saying, for a long time I didn't really know what that meant and I ended up buying a lot of mouthpieces that were not the right mouthpiece for me or for what I was looking for at that time. So, yeah, I've got a couple of mouthpieces here that we can compare, uh, but basically what a baffle is, is in the inside chamber of a mouthpiece, it's a little bump or a big bump that closes down at some point the mouthpiece. It's kind of, it kind of has the effect of putting your thumb over part of a garden hose. It speeds up the air, just like a garden hose that would speed up the water, uh, makes it a little faster um, and a little bit more powerful. Uh, same thing with the mouthpiece, like a little, what they call a rollover baffle is going to do that a little bit. Some of the big step baffles are going to do that a lot. So let's take a look inside. I'm going to try to hold this up to the camera properly. This is an example. This is a Retro Revival True Slant. You can see there's just a little bump in there, just a little little bit of a scoop up before it uh, goes back down and by contrast this is a Theowani Dada and this guy you can tell there's a gigantic wedge in there uh, so what I want to do is uh, I'll play both of these and we'll see uh, see what the difference is uh, once we get a few notes out on them um, and then talk a little bit about what other effects didn't feel and uh, response that that has So this is going to be the Retro Revival Truce Land. To my ears, the sound was a lot brighter with the second mouthpiece, a lot more focused, um, definitely louder. Um, and again, it's that effect of the air being sped up. Uh, those are two pretty dramatic examples. The first mouthpiece had a very small baffle. It's still a jazz piece, but uh, a lot more modest baffle. The second mouthpiece had a huge step baffle in there. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it comes through on the mic, but it was three, four times louder, um, quite a bit more focused, quite a bit brighter. Uh, for a first jazz mouthpiece for a beginning student, I would suggest leaning towards the modest side of that spectrum. Uh, I think if you get too bright and too loud, it can be difficult to play the lower notes uh, because that air is moving so fast and faster air generally does not favor really low notes on the saxophone, at least in a controllable way. Um, but also, I think it's, uh, it's important that you be able to blend. And if you have a sound that's way too focused, way too bright, and way too loud, that's great for when you're taking a solo, uh, but when you have to blend with your section, when you have to play section parts, uh, it can be a little harsh and stick out and, uh, you know, could be a little bit of a problem there. If you have any questions about baffles, how they work, any comments, anything you want to add, and I know that's a quick explanation, uh, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.